Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this um, kimono, ruana, I think that's how you say it, uh, jacket thing. So I'm going to give you some measurements of it, and I don't have a lot of space here. But um, it's made with two panels, and then the panels are sewed together. So now each panel... You can make it bigger if you want, just by adjusting your chain. It's really easy to do that. Each panel, so, is approximately 60 inches long. That's starting from the bottom all the way and wrapped around to the other side. So, from this one, this side, the back side of the panel, all the way around to the front is 60 inches. And that's each panel. There's two of them. Now, across, they are approximately 17 inches. And then another two inches for the border so 17 without the border 19 with the border and that's each side of the panel okay and of course you can add more rows too if you wanted to hang lower on your arms or less rows if you wanted to come up higher so it's really actually pretty easy to do as long as you it's mainly double crochet and a front post a double crochet so let's go ahead and get started on this Okay, for this project, I use Stitch Studio by Nicole Earth Tones. Now, this is a brand that you can get at AC Moore. It is a almost 100% acrylic minus the flex in it, which is uh, accounts for the viscose. It's a medium weight number four. Now, you do not have to use this brand. Any medium weight number four will work. There's 612 yards per... Um, ball and I didn't go through quite four but you're going to need about the color I used is teal for the main color you're going to need about 2300 yards of your main color and then um, I used the same brand for the collar edging and it's called the color I used is taupe and you're going to need, need about two that's just an approximate 200 yards probably maybe a little bit less, of the, of that color. So, about 2,500 yards total of a medium four-weight yarn is what you're going to need. And unless you decide to make it bigger, of course, then you'll need, need uh, more. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. All right, to make it the size I'm making, you want to start off with the chain of 187. Now remember this is the the link that will go from the front and go over your shoulders to the back that I was talking about. So it's the longest piece of the poncho. So if you want it shorter or longer than mine, that's fine. Um, it just, your chain just needs to be an odd number, okay? So I started, if you wanna follow me and do the same size I did, I started with a chain of 187. I'm gonna show you on a smaller scale. But once you get your chain of 187 done, we are going to do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. Now remember, we do not count the one that's on our hook. So one, two, three, fourth stitch. Go ahead and double crochet. And now we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch for the length of our chain. So just like this. One double in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. All right, when you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 185 stitches. Now that counts this chain on the end. It counts as a stitch. So counting him, you'll have a total of 185. Now row two is the repeat row of the whole main part of the kimono or ruana. So it's just a one row repeat, it's pretty easy. So what we're gonna do for row two is we are gonna chain one and turn our work. And we are gonna put a double crochet in the very first stitch. So this very first one right there, we're gonna go and put a double crochet right into that. And now we're going to put a front post double crochet into the next stitch. So that's where we yarn over and go around the post of the next stitch. And then we do just do a double crochet around the post of the stitch, just like that. 
And now we're going to put a regular double crochet into the top of the next. And then we're going to do a front post double crochet into the next. And that's kind of what we're going to repeat for row two. Double crochet into the top of the next. And then front post double crochet into the next. Double crochet into the top of the next. And front post double into the next. And we're going to re keep repeating this. Double crochet, front post double crochet. Double crochet, and then front post double crochet. All the way until we get to the end of the row. Just like that, and that's what it starts to look like. All right, when you make it to the end, your last stitch should be a double crochet into the top of the last stitch. So you should always end in a double crochet. And you should still have 185 stitches. So that's the magic number. You're always going to have 185 stitches at the end of every row. And now we're just going to keep repeating row two. So for row three, we are, we are going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to put a double crochet right there into the very first stitch. And then we are going to front post double crochet around the next stitch. And if you look, you can see it there in the back. Go right around it and front post double crochet and then we're going to put a double crochet into the top of the next stitch and then front post double crochet around the next double crochet into the top of the next and front post double crochet and we're going to repeat this until the end of the row so we're just repeating what we did on row two. And, that, and then it just kind of starts to form a pattern. This is known as the beehive stitch, in case you were <coughs> interested. So double crochet, front post, double crochet, double, front post, all the way to the end of the row. And then when you get to the end, you'll always have your 185 stitches. And that's what it kind of starts to look like. Of course, it'll look different. You know, the more rows you do, the stitch will be more prominent. But you want to do, uh, keep repeating row two for a total of 41 rows. That's how many I did. Now, that's for one panel. Now, if you hold that panel up to you and you feel like you want it to go a little, little down a little further on your arms you can repeat the row for as many times as you want if it's too long on your arms feel free to leave off rows it does not matter how many rows you do <clears throat> just to, however far down you want it to go on your arm but I did a total of 41 rows for mine okay now you want to make two panels exactly the same which I have done here and I don't have a lot of room on my desk they are big panels so I have them both stacked up right here you can see they're the same exact stacked up the same exact um, way here's the start of the first panel here's the start of the second panel okay but so that's how I have mine stacked up and now I'm gonna sew them together not all the way just the back part so what I'm gonna do to sew them together is I'm going to use a yarn needle and a piece of yarn if you prefer to slip stitch that is fine too whatever way works for you okay oh that needle look at that needle that needle is not gonna work let's try this one i don't even know how on that needle got crooked but okay so i got a long piece of yarn on my hook i'm going to start and what we're going to do is we are going to sew it up and we're going to use 85 stitches on each panel. Now, if you want to count them and mark them off with a stitch marker first, that would probably be easier as opposed to counting them as you go. That's completely up to you. I'm just going to count mine as I go. But you want to start from your very first stitch down here 
and count up 85 stitches and you'll put a stitch marker at the 85th stitch and then you'll want to do the same on your bottom one starting at your very first stitch count up 85 stitches and put a stitch marker now then I'm probably gonna regret not marking mine off <laughs> making it harder on myself now once you got it marked off we're just going to sew it together so you start with the first stitch here I'm going through both loops and the first stitch here going through both loops Oh, nothing's working out for me today. You ever have those days? There we go. Leave a tail there that you can sew it in later. Okay. Now I'm not going. To, I'm not going to be going over back and forth, kind of like like a whip stitch. I'm going to be going through the next stitch on this side, and then the next stitch on this side, and pull it through. And then the next stitch here. And then you want to hit the next stitch on the other side. Make sure you get the right stitch. And pull it through. And this is what I'm going to do all the way up until you get to your stitch marker. Or until you've went through 85 stitches. The next stitch on this piece. And then the next stitch on this piece. And this is how I'm going to sew my piece up. The next stitch here. And the next stitch here. Just like this. So I'm going to continue this all the way up until I've finished going through 85 stitches on each panel. And you want to make sure you're getting the same stitch on each panel so it will be equal. Just like this. Next stitch here, next stitch here. There we go. So I'm just going to continue on up until I get to my 85 stitch stitches. Okay, so I have went up 85 stitches. And here is the seam you can see. And what I did was I just tied my, weaved my tail in really, really good and tight. All the way down the seam, you know, a few inches down the seam and tied it off. That way it's nice and tight and it's not going to come undone. So I'm going to flip my work over so that seam is not visible from the other side. There it is. So this is the back side of your work. I do wish I had a bigger table. <laughs> I do not. So I do the best I can with what I have. Okay, and this right here is the front. So this would be like the neck area. This would go behind your neck. And then this would open up in front of you on each side. As you can see from the picture. I am going to go up these two sides and around the neck to form kind of just some type of a collar. So I'm going to use a different collar. Definitely don't have to. You can use the same. It's up to you. But I'm going to use this brown because it brings out the brown flecks that are in my color here. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom of my project. I just, my only wish is that I had bigger, I had a bigger space. And I do apologize for that. So I'm at the bottom of my panel here. And I'm going to work all the way up around the neck here, where we stop sewing it together, and all the way down the other side. I'm going to be working double crochets. So I'm going to start in my very first stitch here on my very first panel over here. I'm going to start by chaining one. Now I'm going to go back into that same stitch and I'm going to double crochet. And now I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch all the way up until I get to my neck and then I'll meet you up there. You should be able to see where the stitches need to go pretty well because you can see you're not, you're working on the tops of these doubles. So it's one double crochet. In every 
every stitch. Just like that. Now I'm going to go all the way up this first side. And I will meet back up with you when we get to the to this crease here where our neck, the back of the neck lays. And uh, we'll go around that corner. I'll help you go around that corner, get around that crease. So keep uh, putting one double crochet in every stitch all the way up this long side until you get to that uh, crease in the neck. And that's where I'll meet you up at. All right, I made it up to the crease here. I put a double crochet into that stitch. Now you can see there are two stitches here where we sewed them together. See that? Go ahead and put one double crochet in each of those. And then that's it. We'll continue down the other side putting one double crochet in every stitch and you should be able to see the stitches easily. Like I said, we're working on top of the double crochets, so not on the sides of them. And I'm going to continue working one double crochet in every stitch down this opposite long side until I get down to the bottom. And that's where I'll meet you and we'll decide what we're gonna do from there. Alrighty, I made it to the bottom. Now, the amount of stitches you have right now does not matter. I'm not even gonna count mine because it doesn't matter how many you have. Um, so I went ahead and double crocheted there in my last stitch down here on the last side. So what I'm gonna do is chain one. I'm gonna turn my big old project and I'm gonna do another round of double crochet. So I'm gonna put a double crochet right back there into that same stitch. And then I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch all the way around across this side, continuing, continuing across the neck and all the way down to the other side. Just what we did, just like we did before. I'm just doing it again. So it's one double crochet all the way around where this, the same area that we just double crocheted before, all around the neck and all the way down the other side until we get back over here. And that's where I'll meet back up with you. Alrighty, I made it to the end again on the other side. So I am going to repeat that one more time. So I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to do another row of one double crochet in every stitch starting with this very first stitch and I'm just going to continue just do the same thing I did on the last two rows one double in every stitch all the way up this side around the neck and then back down the other side and you should end up right over here remember the amount of stitches you have on these rows does not matter it's not going to make a difference so i'm just going to continue here with row three here i guess of the collar edging i guess that's what we'll call it i'm not sure side up the front and collar edging this would be row three of it and this will be the last row that i do so I'm just going to continue repeating the two rows I just did. One double in every stitch. Like that. Until I get back over here to the other side. All right. Once you finish that last row of the edging, you can just hide your tails. And that's it. That's what it looks like. I just put a necklace and a belt on it. Of course, you can wear it without the belt. But it stays open on both sides because that's how the Ruanas and the kimonos are. But feel free to 
if you want to put it on and sew up part of the sides and the sleeve sleeves you can do that too you know it's yours whatever you want to do but that's it i hope you enjoyed my tutorial i hope you were able to follow along okay please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my videos and until next time have a good day